God's beginning is with each religious denomination or sect. For instance, Allah is declared the one and only God through the declaration of the Islamic faith. When Muhammad, who was born in 570 AD and died in the year 632 AD in Arabia made an Islamic declaration of faith that there is no God but Allah, that declaration was the birth of the Allah concept as taught in Islam. When Moses declares in his question, who should I say sent me? Exodus 3.13, and the God of the Jewish Torah answers, I am that I am, Exodus 3.14, Ehiye Asher Abiye, then he declares the Jewish concept of God. In the Bible God enters as Elohim first in Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, then becomes Yahweh Elohim, Genesis 2.4, onto just Yahweh, Genesis 4.26, and even onto Adonia, Genesis 18.3, a title also used by human beings, Genesis 15.2. This growing process from plural to singular, establishes the birth of each of the God concepts of Judaism in the Torah, though he has many other names there. These are the basic principles. Now for the Christians, who choose to use Greek and Latin, two languages that Jesus the Christ did not speak. They took on the same principle of Judaism and used Theos, God, Kyrios, Lord or Despots and Dios, while each claimed that the God that represents them by whichever name they call on, to use according to whichever language they chose, was the very God of the beginning of creation. All the while, their books, scriptures, scrolls or tablets were written many thousands of years, after the fact. The fact is, that their God has its origin with the birth of each of their religions. The same will apply to, Hinduism, Buddhism, Sikhism, Baha'ism, which are religions to house their God concept. There would be no God, so in this sense, God has a beginning, or as each of you come to know of God that is his beginning, or at least to each person. And what would God's purpose be without man? Nothing. What would man's purpose be without God? The answer is quite simple. The same as with a God's survival, simply animalistic survival. Man can in fact exist without God, but a God cannot exist without man. That is why man created God in his image and after his likenesses, and then said God created man in his image and after his likeness. Because man is in fact God and admits it in his holy scriptures by calling himself the Son of God, Luke 3.38, at one point, and God at another point, Psalms 82.6, John 10.34 1 Corinthians, 3.16. The word angel in Greek is angelos and simply means messenger. The Hebrew word for angel is malak and the Arabic word is malaiak, all having the same meaning messenger. To commit oneself to believing in angels is to admit to the belief in God, who supposedly sends these angelic or apparitional, spiritual or ghost-like beings with messages for humankind. Angels as spirit beings have not been confirmed. No one has proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that these beings, oftentimes depicted with beings, exist. The concept of angels did not originate with the Greeks, who have their Olympia of gods that settle in heaven such as Zeus, who is sex with humans and is half god half man children that walk the earth. And then they guide them to humans that are all mortal. These beings would be angels or Christ-like. A little research into cultures that predate the Greeks and the Bible, such as the Sumerians, reveal stone carvings of winged mortals. Also the Native Americans and the oldest of all cultures that have carvings of winged beings and deities are the Egyptians. Theologians of the monotheistic religion namely Judaism, Christianity, and Mohammedism, have divided these mythological creatures into groups, the Seraphim, the Cherubim and even Thrones. The ancient Egyptian had them as Enneads, Ogdodes, and Nebat. They even break them up into good and evil. Then Europe steps in in their architecture, cathedrals are covered with demonic winged creatures called gargoyles. That became your angels and devils today. When man created the God concept, he raised God to such a high pedestal where God became unseen. Thus, unable to speak to God one on one. Therefore, man needed a mediator. Because he placed God up there, as in Matthew 6 9 where it states, Our Father who art in heaven, and the Quran 4384 where it states, It is he who is Allah in heaven. It became necessary for these mediators they call angels to have a means to transport themselves thus, they gave them wings. So in fact, angels were cleared by man to be messengers of man to man, but claim it's from God to man. The war mentioned in the book of Revelation 12 7 of the New Testament is late information added on at the end of the Bible. To make these beings appear more human, which explains why several quotes in the Bible and the Quran personify them into human form as in the Quran 19.17, and in the Bible Daniels 9.21. In both cases, these angelic beings have now become mortals in physical form, but man wasn't satisfied with that. His ego made him bring God into physical form. Like Jesus, the Son of God at one point, and God himself at others. Some ask, do Christians look at God as a supreme being? 
Not being a representative for all Christians of each denomination, cult or sect makes answering this question unfair, for I would be taking on the responsibility of all those who call themselves Christians and no man can honestly do that. However, many that I have spoken to in my travels have a quite confused concept of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, one God, a supreme being, and the Heavenly Father. When you question them on that subject, they become extremely evasive. Human beings are not created spontaneously. Everything that exists grew, and growth is a process, the way mold forms, the way bacteria forms. They form out of conditions like mushrooms, which need darkness. Corn needs sunlight, and there is actually particles of energy in the sun that is going into the earth and causing plants to reach for its warmth and light, thus growth. To date, they have found life on the planet Mars in this solar system. And even more is known about life and living beings from other worlds and or dimensions, but they can't tell you yet. The real truth could destroy the system, the order, and religious belief system. So they will never tell you the whole truth. Looking at the words, and God said let there be light, Genesis 1-3, the word you're used in the Bible for light is really the word fire, because there was no electrical lights during that time period, and fire cannot burn without oxygen. So, now let there be light meant, let there be fire and scientific data has proven that every element has an atomic weight. So you need oxygen for God to say let there be light, meaning fire. If I brought this chemical up to the 8LH element, which is the atomic number for oxygen, at least 8 elements would have to be in existence between, H1, hydrogen and, O2, oxygen. In order for fire to burn, you need oxygen. So before God said let there be light, at least one of those elements would have to exist, which would be the sixth element carbon, which is C6, between 1 and 8. We are not talking about incandescent or fluorescent lights, we are talking about fire, and fire needs to consume something to exist. When fire consumes something, it transforms that something into carbon, because you needed the oxygen to have fire. The opposite of fire would be water. And in order to get water, you need hydrogen and oxygen. You have to have H2O, so actually you have to pass HE, helium, with atomic number 2, a burning substance like the sun. Let there be light, is talking about a sun, but not the sun, because three forms of light are created in the Bible. You have one form of light created in Genesis 1-3 where it states, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. The second form of light created in Genesis 1-14 where it states, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven. And the third form of light created in Genesis 1:16, where it states, And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. Let there be light, and poof, light just appears out of nowhere, is religious rhetoric. It is not current information or scientific fact. The Quran and the Bible are both outdated and do not match up to scientific data, but is an institution that keeps man in a spellbound state, because they don't want an amoral society, which would cause chaos that they could not control. Just look at these examples, God made two great lights, the sun and the moon. Genesis 1:16. and God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, he made the stars also. The moon is not a light, it is a reflection of the sun. According to the American Heritage Dictionary, the moon is the natural satellite of earth. Visible rye reflection of sunlight. God made the sun stand still, Joshua 10:13. and the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and hasted not to go down about a whole day. This is a scientific mistake, because neither the sun nor the moon stand still. They revolve and rotate in its planetary course. The moon revolves around the planet and receives its light from the sun, while the earth revolves around the sun. Bats are called birds, fowl, however, According to the Bible in Leviticus 11:13, it states, Leviticus 11:13 to 19, And these are they which ye shall have an abomination among the fowls, they shall not be eaten, they are an abomination, the eagle, and the ossifrage, and the osprey, and the vulture, and the kite after his kind, every raven after his kind, and the owl, and the night hawk, and the cuckoo, and the hawk after his kind, and the little owl, and the cormorant, and the great owl, and the swan, and the pelican, and the gear eagle, and the stork, the heron after her kind, and the lapwing, and the bat. Bats are not birds. According to the American Heritage Dictionary, a bat is defined as any of various nocturnal flying mammals of the order Chiroptera, having membranous wings that extend from the forelimbs to the hind limbs or tail and anatomical adaptations for echolocation, by which they navigate and hunt prey. In Hebrew, bat means of uncertain derivation, a bat. 
Fowl means a bird, as covered with feathers, or rather as covering with wings, often collectively. Bird, that flieth, flying, fowl. It comes from the root mean, to fly, fly about, fly away. According to the American Heritage Dictionary, fowl means any of various birds of the order galliforms, especially the common, widely domesticated chicken. A bird, such as the duck, goose, turkey, or pheasant that is used as food or hunted as game. A bird of any kind. Do you see Thu mistake? They use the word fowl for bat and a bat is not a fowl, it's not even a bird, it's a nocturnal mammal. So why does God manipulate human thought? To answer this question one would be committing themselves to the belief in a God. Or the God concept, when in actuality, what would God be without man? What would man be without God? The first has no answer and the second is quite simple. They are not separated at all in Al, existence. Now look, mortals are just another animal who evoluted to an intelligent level that succeed most other animals, and in realizing homo sapiens superiority. Their fears compel them to create a god in their image and after their likeness, who slates created in his image and after his likeness according to Genesis 1:26. So in fact, God did not create man, man created God. Man wrote the books and say they come from God. They make the mistake when it says. And God said. Not and I said. God only exists in and through man. Not before and not after as he needs it. It's this concept of God being an old man sitting in heaven with a lot of winged angels around that don't exist. God came into existence with each individual's awareness of God. Terms like God the Father, and our Father, help to create the God image. The day that you became aware of God was the day that God began to exist. So in fact, God only exists as long as man existed. And God cannot exist after man except in concept. Remember, you made this God a man. God is a part of man's intellect as an assurance that he is superior to other animals, a way of feeding his insecurities, such as having pets. The word Elohim, which is being translated as God in Genesis, in the translation is read as a singular, but grammatically could be read plural. In fact, in the language that the theologians of Judaism claim it was revealed in Hebrew, such as the word Elohim. In fact, it is plural in that language. So the question, is there a God? Leaves room for questioning. Are they ready to face the fact that their holy book begins with in the beginning God's created, and not, in the beginning the God or a God created? The concept of God came out of the loneliness of the intelligent Homo sapien. When this being evolved to the point where it could separate hate from love, fear from courage, be decisive, make decisions, become possessive, it bred desire, need, want, jealousy, and loneliness. When human creatures feel that no other human quite understands them or can't satisfy their craving, they created the God concept. A universal father or grandfather type that is ever forgiving and most merciful, even to the point of justification for wrongdoing through confession and forgiveness. One of the first signs of this is in the Bible Genesis 2:18, where it states and I quote, And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone, I will make him and help meet for him. The word alone and not good tells you that this God knew what loneliness was, giving God human feelings. For years I have taught you about this, while I walked you through the degree of Mohammedism slash Islamism. I explained to you about the secret meaning of the 112th chapter Suratu al Akhlas of the Quran, the degree of pure faith. When we look at the first verses, say he Allah is alone he Allah is needless, I explained to you how you have placed within you the divine by way of the breath of life, thereby you are God, Psalms 82 6 and John 10 34, and I quote, Psalms 82 6, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. John 10 34, Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said. Ye are gods? Yet, you lack all the experiences to bring you back to the fullness of its realization. Homo sapiens would have to get past the point of fearing being alone, not alone as in lonely, alone as in need of a crutch to praise or blame for events in one's life, and feeling without need thereby, needless. Not needless as tn once of material things, but instead needless as in complete within oneself by the realization that once union with God is made, there's nothing you need, desire, want, etc., for which you don't already possess, the potential to manifest through the power of thought. They know that if Homo sapiens ever realize his full potential, there's nothing he would be unable to do, Genesis 11:6. and the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do, and now nothing will he restrain from them which they have imagined to do. God according to them wouldn't have a concept of beginning and ending because they declare God the Alpha and the Omega in Christianity, the Awal and the Akir in Islam, 
and the Rishon and a Quran in Judaism, all meaning the beginning and the ending. The first and the last. And for God to be the author of the concept of, the beginning and ending would subject him to the ultimate question of beginning of what? And why do we say that? Because the concept of in the beginning in Genesis is followed by the statement, a group of gods, Elohim, created the heavens, and the earth. The next question would be from what? But the third part of the statement of Genesis verse 2 clears it up when it states, and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. That means clearly that something existed, but it was as stated without form and void and darkness was upon the face or surface of the deep, and the spirit of gods, Elohim, moved upon the face of the waters. So this couldn't possibly have been the very beginning of all things because water is a compound element H2O, which reveals the existence of at least eight elements. 1. Hydrogen, 2. Helium, 3. Lithium, 4. Beryllium, 5. Boron, 6. Carbon, 7. Nitrogen, and 8. Oxygen. In order to have carbon, which in itself is a substance produced by burning or deterioration, tells us that not only did water exist, but a substance or mailer existed. So there is no way one can declare the statement in Genesis chapter 1 as the beginning of all creation and of all things. If believers believe their God, be it Jehovah, Allah, or Theos to be the first and the last, this would be the foundation for their laws of time. Even though their holy book establishes time after their God was already here when it states in Genesis 1:14, and I quote, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days, and years. At this point in the Bible, time is being established by lights in the firmament. The Hebrew word used for firmament is rakia meaning the skies. They are talking about what all astronomers know as the sun, the moon, and the stars, as it states in Genesis 1:16, and I quote, And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, he made the stars also. So, it is plain to see that time existed before the creation of time in the Bible, and even Genesis 4-3 adds the word time, when in fact in the Hebrew, the word yom is there for day. What I am saying is based on the Bible. There is no accurate calculation of time. Time doesn't go. Time is not a process of motion, but the confirmation of existence. So does that mean that it's not possible for time to travel? The word travel in itself implies moving from one point to another point, while the same word travail means to stay. Time only appears to move from one point to another because man has numbered existence, to create once, moment, moments, 60 moments, 60 seconds, 60 minutes, 24 hours, days, 7 days, a week, 29 30 days, a month, years, 10 years, a decade, 20 years, a score, 50 years, a jubilee, 100 years, a century, 400 years, a generation, 1000 years, a millennium, 25,000 years, an equinox, a procession, and eons. Man took existence and declared it from one point to the next and called it clocking time. Man numbered it into a repeated mathematical system and thus, people who are looking at a flat circular concoction called a clock. Then, they watch a hand go into a complete circle, and think that they are moving forward, when in actuality time just is. If time was in part moving, then the whole solar system would be moving and it's not. The earth is moving around the sun, and the earth is rotating on its axis. However, the whole thing isn't moving, and a clock on the wall is not moving. Time travel is another form of an illusion from travailing, to make you think you are going forward and backward, when in fact you are not. By the statement, as it was in the beginning so shall it be in the end, Matthew 24 37, which is the same thing. The book of Revelation is merely talking about things that John saw, if John saw all of these catastrophes, then they were already happening as they were being revealed to him. God was merely, as you say, opening a gate, making it possible to see here and there at the same time. The point being, if John saw these things happening, then they were happening. Prophecy is merely carrying the thought to the event, or carrying the point to the event. Prophecy of what happened today, happened 10 years ago. I remember a man saying, was there which is here, when they asked, let there be light. John had a vision of the future. He saw and witnessed the vision. He woke up and cried as if it was a nightmare. He saw the animals, and he saw the beasts. If it happened in his head, then it happened. There is no prophesy that is coming from the past forward, they are all here. Today is like trying to catch tomorrow. When tomorrow comes, you call it today, and today becomes yesterday. There is not one yesterday, and there is not one tomorrow, so you are not going anywhere. This is a part of the illusion that the planet moves around the sun and that is time, but they are really not going anywhere. 
Scientists also want to know if the whole universe is on a journey somewhere. The answer is absolutely not. Motion is defined by moving from one point to another. There is here and here is there. However, that doesn't mean that there is no such thing as motion. It takes 25,000 years for the whole universe to make a complete revolution. It works with the equinox, which is 25,000 years. Thus I say, that is what time it is. Realize that they, by adding a letter, have us under the illusion that there's a difference. Take these words, one, where, two, there, and three, here. What is the difference? If we remove the letter W from the word where, we have here, and if we remove the letter T from there we have here. So in reality, they are one and the same. It's just a play based on what you are being misled to believe, which is only an illusion. And what laws govern the universe? It's not what laws. It's what law, and that is change. The only definite in all existence is change. The Earth is on a 23 degree axis creating a procession of 26,000 years. It is in one sense in time and it isn't in another. At its circumference or certain it is creating the equinox of 25,000 years and its polar is off creating a procession of 26,000 years. So, it is in a sense that because it's a part of a solar system in this case sun and planets revolve and rotate around one another. It isn't in a sense that each planet is unique in its growth based on the distance it is from the center of this solar system or sun system. So how would the universe as we know it begin again? Quite simply, take a bag of dehydrated, stale bread, where all life has appeared to have disappeared. Sprinkle some water in your hand, throw it into the bag, seal the bag up and wait a period of time, upon which you will find mold. This is life created by the right conditions. If you ask any astronomer questions on the universe, they really don't know the answers. They will tell you what they think according to their knowledge. They use words like could be, maybe, might, possibly, I think, I don't know, I have to see, just to name a few. As scientists look farther into the universe, they see larger and larger structures. The biggest structures that are being observed cannot be explained by any current theory. Lately, cosmologists have used the Hubble Space Telescope to study the universe. However, they are still not sure yet. A cosmologist states, the universe started out in a very hot and very dense state somewhere between 8 billion years ago, and that it has been expanding outward ever since, the Big Bang in a nutshell.